is the Bitcoin top in? Did Wales just cause Bitcoin to drop below 60,000 US dollar again to 58K? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys. Wherever you are in this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin Family channel. Yes, Bitcoin Original. You can get them in our store on thebitcoinfamily.com, guys. In today's video, guys, we have five amazing Bitcoin charts, amazing charts you need to see today because, yes, I know a lot of you are freaking out. We need to zoom out, but also be realistic. The top could be in. Of course, giving you a crypto tip, of course, answering the question of a follower, and of course, ending the video with an inspirational quote. But first, let's quickly jump into the news to see what is happening in this industry with those whales. A large whale or a large Bitcoin holding entity may have caused Bitcoin to drop below the 60k level again. There was an unknown whale that sold for 180 million dollar worth of Bitcoin within three minutes. And of course if you sell that amount of Bitcoins within three minutes it will cause a drop. And that drop went all the way back to 57k levels, even lower than the previous low that we already created. This is, of course, not bullish. Why are these whales selling? If you look on the chart, you can see that it was one whale causing that huge drop at the moment. What kind of entity or person is this? Definitely not BlackRock or one of those because we know exactly which wallets they use. So we know there was no outflow that big from those wallets. But this could be just a private whale or an other entity that we don't know of which wallet they are using that sold 180 million dollar worth of bitcoin within three minutes and of course that caused the drop i think below that 60k level that we didn't expect could we drop further that is now the question and I think that I want to answer this while I'm behind my laptop, behind the computer, showing you the charts, what my expectations are for Bitcoin right now. So you need to keep on hanging in here and watch this video till the end to understand my view on this drop. How deep could we go? Is this bull market over? Or is this just another correction within this massive bull mark all the way into 2025? Let's quickly jump into the charts to show you exactly what I mean. The first chart for today, guys, is this four hour chart. Today, I'm going to talk also about a very bearish outlook on Bitcoin, an outlook at the top could be in. I'm going to show you a couple of charts that I found in a beautiful article that will show you, hey, the top could be in, but also show you maybe it's something different this time. So let's watch the complete video before you start to freak out, zoom out. I'm just going to show you this. So I want to show you other perspective as well. It's not my opinion. I don't believe that that's going to happen, but I do want to share it with you guys so you understand there's also people thinking a little bit more bearish than I am. Now, the first chart is this four hour chart. On this four hour chart, we can see that we even went lower than the previous dip here. That low was over there at 57. Now we went even here, 57,800. So we went a little bit lower. Now, if you look in the bigger perspective, then we are still keeping support on that area over here, guys, that red area, that could be this complete area of support. If we fall down below this one, we will fall to this 51, 52K level. There is not that much support in between. 52K level would be then the next level of support. RSI, again, you can see going to the bottom levels. So it means, yeah, we should be returning somewhere. If we keep above this, then we can even see an uptrend again. So it's not a bullish chart, but it's a very beautiful moment to add Bitcoins to your day because in the long term perspective, nothing is changing yet. And that is what we see if we look to the daily chart. On the daily chart, we can see we are finding support on this red line. This is a 200 day moving average. This 200 day moving average is the most important line during a bull market. As long as we keep that line of support, we don't need to be freaking out. We found support. I already was talking about it when we were here in the top. I told you if we break these three lines, the blue, the yellow, and the green, we will fall to the red line, and that will be the ultimate support. That line is at 58,000 levels. If we hold the support on a daily candle, this is a very important line. I switched now to an other chart to show you how important it is uh, in the long term. If we zoom out, let me see. I will put this one to the bottom over here and this one also now for some bit but if I look to the long term on a daily time frame to the previous bull market over here check that red line when we were above this red line we stayed above that red line until we fell down below the red line that was the initial start of the bear market yes we pumped above it again with the double top 
But when we came down below it again, bear market. If we look to 2017 bull market, the line was also very important. And I would prefer to compare this current bull market to the 2017 one. Because look, that red line, when we came above it and we fell down, we retested it there. That was just the beginning of the bull market. This was in April 2016. This was around the halving. When we came up again, after the halving and we came down, bam, we retested again that line. I will remove a few of these lines from that time. Yes, I was already making charts in that time. You can see them over here, the green lines. I will remove these to make it a little bit more clear for you that you can see only four lines, the blue, the green, the yellow, and the red. But you can see that the red line was touched over there as support in 2017, over there as support. Yeah, we went down below it, but we kept support. Over here, almost as support. You can see that the red line was very important. Now, we had that halving over there in May. We went up from that halving. We came down, we tested that red line. Then we had the summer in 2016, which you can compare to the summer of 2024, which was really boring all the way till October, look sideways moving, almost here from July till October, sideways. From there, we start to crawl up again, crawl up again. One more time, test that line over there. And from there, we went all the way up into December stop in 2017. This was from 2016 summer till 2017 top. We are now, in my opinion, in this very boring part. Maybe we just touch this line and maybe we will go a little bit higher and touch that red line again in the future, but that red line is support. I believe that the current bull market yes it's a little bit busy chart maybe i should have made a new chart for this but i believe that the current bull market we will find again support on that red line and this is the second time we find that support bear market bottom was in over here guys there's the bear market bottom we went up we came even down below the line over there we went up again now we are testing this line over there and from here i think we should go up 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 more and more and more but that is just my opinion. But I'm also going to show you a very bearish opinion. The support levels are this line. And if we fall uh, below that line, then we could fall to that green line over here, 52K. And then the ultimate support would be around 45K even. So yes, these are possibilities. I'm not saying it's going to happen. All possibilities. But you know, let's see. Let's see if we keep support on that red line. Yes, these dollars need to be redrawn and everything. Now, the RSI. I told you last time already on the daily is looking pretty uh, positive because we did bottom out in RSI. We went even to the level of 21 on the daily chart. And I showed you we didn't go that low many times. And every time when we did, we had a bounce or a sideways movement and then a bounce. So yes, the daily RSI is looking okay. And also here, the MACD still looking pretty okay because we are trying to cross the blue line is trying to cross that red line and when they cross it is also a bullish movement so we are in between let now see first if we hold that 200 day moving average if we can hold that all okay if we can't please be prepared that we could even drop to 52k levels now i'm going to show you that bearish outlook that is all based on this article this article is called three reasons why bitcoin analysts think a bitcoin price cycle top is in during this article they are talking about a couple of charts this is just a price chart you know that we uh, see the, the the tops over here and another top over there and they are now analyzing a couple of charts this is the first chart they are analyzing and on this chart they are saying hey the long-term hodler inflation rate is really high at the moment you can see on the right side over here in the box uh, that that level is now around 1.9. Normally, these levels are the levels that we have a bull market top is already in. If you look back here to 2014, that bull market top was in when the purple line was around that level. 2017, there was a massive blow off top. We were way higher. We were on a level of 4.5, 4.6. But 2021, again, we were at the same levels, like 2.0 or even a little bit higher, like 2.1 or 2.2. But we were around these levels. And that was when the top was in. Now, we are here at that level 1.9. So this indicator could tell us, yeah, hmm, maybe that top is in. That's a long-term hodler inflation rate. You can read it all in this article. So please do your own research. Go to the article and read it. So that this is from Capriole Investment Fund, Charles Edwards. So Charles Edwards is saying, hey, this 
level is too high at the moment. Now, then if you look to the Bitcoin dormancy flow, that has been on a three month increase, also there it was stated, hey, look how high we are. Look how high we are. We are at the levels, first look at 2017, we had a huge peak in that red line, then we came down and then we stayed around that dollar line, but then the bull market top was in. Look what happened in 2021. We went hugely up with that red line, again to a level between three and six, we fell down and we stayed down and then the bull market was in. Now look what happened today. We went up in 2024 with that red line to the level between three and six, we came down and we are staying there now. Could this mean that the Bitcoin bull market top is in? This is the dormancy Z score. I don't want to scare you guys. I don't want to make you afraid of everything that's going to happen. I'm just sharing a bearish outlook on Bitcoin that you can find on Cointelegraph. Uh, it's now one of the trending articles. Of course, it's trending because it's drama. So do read those articles to see also the bearish outlook, but also do visit the, the full report so that you can also read the rest. This is, of course, just a news article creating drama, and you should be looking at the drama. This chart is not the right chart. There's another chart and that should be shown over here. And I think if you go to the tweet, yes, you will find the right chart as this one. He is saying, wow, I have never seen so many Bitcoin uh, long-term holding Bitcoin, so the Bitcoins between 7 and 10 years, flowing into the market. $9 billion worth of Bitcoin float on-chain. These are Bitcoins that haven't been moved between 7 and 10 years, and they are now entering the market. Could this be Mt. Gox? Could this be government selling? It can be in many things. Probably a huge part is because of Mt. Gox. But at least that chart is showing us, hey, the Bitcoins that haven't been moving between 7 and 10 years are creating a peak. They are entering this mark. Of course, I believe this is Mt. Gox, but just another warning. If you look to the other peaks that we saw in these charts, like in 2021, when we saw those peaks and Bitcoins moving on-chain, that was also the bull market top. Every time when you see these peaks, is the bull market top or the bear market bottom, guys. But mostly around the bull market top, look here in 2017, when we had those high yellow bars, that was when the top was in. Now, this is the highest yellow bar I've ever seen. This whole chart is being destroyed because there's $9 billion worth of Bitcoin now entering the market. So also a bearish chart. Now, then they are also going, of course, into the governments. You know, the United States sent 4,000 Bitcoins to Coinbase from their 209,000 Bitcoins. Germany was selling their Bitcoins. I talked about that in the last couple of videos. Other governments are holding some of them, like Finland, also selling their Bitcoins. So yes, there's a lot of selling pressure. There's a lot of selling pressure on the charts. Now, do you now need to freak out? That is what we are going to talk about. I'm going to give you my opinion now, because I think it's very important that you understand this as well. There, my face a little bit bigger on the screen. Now, do we now need to freak out? I don't believe we need to freak out, guys. We could even make a chart like it was in 2013, 14. In that time, we had two massive blow of tops. In 2013, up a blow of top, we came down, and another huge top in 2014. Maybe we are creating that kind of top. Maybe the top is in, but for me, the top mostly will be in around 17 months after the halving. We just saw the halving. We still need to go all the way up to December this year to see if we have the strength to create a new all-time high around 80k, 90k. And then again, we will do our TA on the charts. If then all the indicators start flashing, then the top is in. So for me, I will keep watching the indicators and I also watch these kind of charts, of course, to be adding Bitcoins in these dips. I hope you really enjoyed those charts. I hope those charts made a little bit more clear for you what exactly is happening to Bitcoin. And if this is normal of this time, it's really different. Are we just experiencing another top, which would be a triple top, like 70K, 73K, now 74K, and now the bull market is over? I think you now understand what I think. But again, I'm just a guy in this industry already since 2013. I don't know everything. I don't have a crystal ball. I can't predict the future, but these are my viewings of the past. This is my TA. So for me, this bull market is definitely not over. For me, we are just getting started. For me, yes, we can dip to 57. Yes, we can dip to 52K. Yes, we could even dip to 48K. I wouldn't care. 
I will keep accumulating Bitcoin as I believe we will get another run all the way into 2025 where the ultimate bull market top will be again 17 months after the halving. And in these bull markets, yes, it will be volatile and we will be going up and down and up and down. But the end result is always somewhere between 16 and 18 months after the halving. And that would be September, October, November-ish in 2025 that we see the ultimate bull market up. I still believe way above 100K between 120 and 160. So that is the moment I will be exchanging a part of my portfolio into the stable coins so I can buy Bitcoins back even lower again when we really crash in the bear market 2026, 27 to a new bear market bottom. And there I will load up again. But I will still stay in this market now all the way up till the top, around the top, exchange a part of the portfolio into stable coins to be able to buy Bitcoin back cheaper. The crypto tip for today, guys, is about the Bitcoin miners. Always keep an eye on the Bitcoin miners. The biggest miner out there, Marathon Digital, is not selling a single Bitcoin in June. They are huddling all their Bitcoins. We always see this kind of acting just before the bull market really takes off. These miners will hold their Bitcoins till the price goes higher before they take profits. So the biggest miner out there, Marathon Digital, didn't sell a single Bitcoins in June and has no plans to sell any Bitcoins before we go higher up again. That's what they publicly stated. They don't think this bull market is over. So the miners still have full trust in that four-year cycle that will take Bitcoin up to the top in 2025 before we get a huge dump again into the bear market and another halving in 2028 where we again make the next cycle all the way up till 2032. So these miners, they know this game. They are playing this game for a very long time. And believe me, these miners have a lot of risk. They have all their employees, they have all the fixed costs of rent, of electricity, of all that other stuff. So their fixed costs every month, they keep on running. So they need to be profitable to be able to pay all those costs. And because of the halving that we just saw, they are earning less Bitcoins. 50% less Bitcoins with the same capacity of machines earning 50% less Bitcoins. So if the price of Bitcoin drops as well, they're not only earning 50% less Bitcoins, but they're also earning less Bitcoins against a lower price, while their fixed costs every month are the same. They can't have that. If the miners allow this to happen, they will all go bankrupt. So the miners need to make sure that the price goes up. And how can the miners make sure that the price goes up? by holding all their Bitcoins. They won't be selling any Bitcoins. They will just huddle them, and because of the huddling them, they create scarcity on the market because they are not dumping their Bitcoins. No one else can dump the Bitcoins on the market, only the miners, they're the biggest part of this moment of new Bitcoins. So then there's scarcity, and that will drive the price up again. And when that price is going to go up to those new levels of all-time highs, that is when the miners will start selling again, and also when Marathon Digital will start to sell again. And to be clear, as of June, this miner held 18,536 Bitcoins, somewhere around $1.1 billion worth of Bitcoin that they are not selling. They are waiting for a doubling of the price that they will be selling against $2 billion worth of Bitcoins. Miners know how to play this game. They will keep playing this game every four-year cycle. They stop selling, creating scarcity. The price will pump up and they will start to take profits. And all the other miners, the very small ones, yes, they need to be selling because they need to take profit. There are those huge miners that are renewing their system, that are already in this bull market for a couple of bull markets. They will not be selling because they know this is not the moment to sell. This is the moment to huddle and create scarcity to pump that price. But at the moment, the biggest miner of the world has not been selling a single Bitcoin in June. answering the question of one of the followers, Didi, but when are you selling? Now you told us that the big whales are selling and that the miners are selling, but Didi, when are you selling? I will be selling when the indicators tell me it is time to sell. And I have a set of indicators on my trading view chart that I have given access to, to all the VIPs, and they know exactly when these indicators will start flashing. And when these indicators start flashing, I will be taking my profits. I'm not depending on my own predictions like 120 to 160 or other people's predictions to 500,000, 200,000, a million, I am depending on the charts. The moment I can see, for example, the pie cycle indicators 
flash on the trading view, I know the top is in. The moment I can see the MVRV Z score going too high on trading view, I know the bull market top is in. The moment the RSI is stopping out, the moment the MACD is stopping out, the moment all of these indicators, I have a few more on this chart, are flashing, that is the moment when those indicators are telling me, Didi, it's time to sell. I was emotional involved in the first cycle, like the 2013 cycle, heavily emotional involved. We fell from $1,200 to $200. I experienced at that time already what it was to see a crash of $1,200 to $200. Now that second bull market, the one I went all in in my house, of course I was still emotional involved. We went from $900 all the way up to $20,000, then we dropped again to 3,000 US dollars. I know how it is to be emotional involved, but I taught myself to disconnect my emotions to my HODL stack. Yes, I will still be a little bit emotionally involved when I'm trading, but my HODL portfolio, my pension fund, all the Bitcoins in long-term storage that I don't have access to, no emotions there, because I know this is the best asset I can be HODLing for the long term. Not gold, not dollars, not euros, not silver, not diamonds, not any of those. The best asset to stack my capital long term is Bitcoin and there is no emotion there. So I will be taking some profits of course at this bull market top with my trading portfolio, exchanging to stable coins to be able to buy a shitload of Bitcoins back at the bear market. You know if we crash we will crash again with 60 to 70 percent or 50 to 70 percent this time but that crash will be there after 2025 top and then you should be buying back again at bottom to multiply your Bitcoins. But my long term stack zero emotions. I will keep holding them. This is the gold of the 21st century. This is my pension fund. This is generational wealth for my children and their children. I have no emotions there. I do still have some emotion when it comes to trading. But that's because I love that game. I love that game of like excitement. I love the trade. I want to be, make profits. I want to be better. I want to become a better trader. I love this part. And there is some emotions involved, always. There is always like, ah, should I sell a little bit more Bitcoin? Should I take my profits over there? Should I buy Bitcoins a little bit lower? But that's my trading portfolio. And I'm not the best trader, and that's why I still have some emotions over there, because the best traders don't have emotions. But when it comes to my whole portfolio, zero, zero, zero emotions. One million percent believe in Bitcoin in the long term. Short term, do whatever you want. Long term, the best asset, the king of asset is Bitcoin. That is the asset the biggest part of your capital should be in. So stop freaking out, start zooming out, and definitely stop crying start buying each and every dip. I believe every time when you can buy some Bitcoin below 60K, when there's a five involved, you should be buying. You will be doubling your capital in the next 12 months to above 100K. What return of investment are you waiting for? This is the ultimate moment to add to your portfolio, guys. And that brings me to the last part of the video, guys, the inspirational quote. The inspirational quote has also to do with something I did yesterday. Yesterday was flight boarding or e-foiling. I don't know exactly what is the name. I think that the board is called a flight board. I think the thing that you're doing is called e-foiling. It's like on this surfboard with a small motor with a wing down below it. And then you start to come above the water and you just e-foil. I didn't succeed exactly in that e-foiling, but I could really hold my balance when I was just on the water. Sometimes came up. I went down again, but I couldn't continuously stay up, but maybe I should do it a little bit more times than just once <laughs> to be able to do that. Sometimes you want to do something too fast. But that brings me also to the inspirational quote for the day. You should be learning as if you live forever and you should be living life as if you could die tomorrow. That is a very inspirational quote. Learn as if you live forever. Every day you need to learn something new. Also when it comes to Bitcoin, also when it comes to Bitcoin trading, also when it comes to Bitcoin hodling. Educate yourself every day a little bit by listening to podcasts, by reading books, by watching my videos. Keep learning, keep educating yourself. Educate yourself as if you're going to live forever, that you need all this knowledge to survive in the future. But live your life as if you die tomorrow. Very beautiful quote. Every day you should be grabbing life by the balls. I even sometimes forget to do that because I'm too busy with making these videos, because I'm too busy with trying to optimize, become a better influencer, YouTuber, 
to educate all of those people out there to understand Bitcoin. This peaceful revolution that will lead to peaceful anarchy is a too big of a passion sometimes for me, so I forget about myself. I start to think only about others, only about other people that need to understand why we took that step. But also, I try to convince people to take the same step. Why? Because it's the best step for your capital. And when your capital starts to work, and you're not making YouTube videos and all this stuff, <laughs> then you also have a lot of more time for yourself. So I made a promise to me in this last bear market, I'm gonna educate those people out there, this full bear market. I'm gonna take them by the hand. When that bottom is in, I will tell them, now buy Bitcoin. I will lead them all the way to the bull market top. And then I will tell them also when to sell. And I will do this one time, full time. I will do this every day, very committed. I want to be very structured and do these videos daily to educate you, to keep coaching you, to keep helping you to understand why I am not selling my Bitcoins yet and when I will be selling my Bitcoins. So that passion is so big that sometimes you even forget about yourself. And yesterday was one of those days that I realized it again because of being on that flight board, just busy with doing one thing, only enjoying that moment of flight boarding, e-foiling, then again, you realize, shit, I haven't been doing that enough. And to be very clear, I haven't been doing a shitload of things that make me really happy, like making these videos, but like traveling, like all of that stuff. But sometimes just shutting down for one hour, just focusing on a full passion, like flight boarding or like football or like padel or like, I haven't been doing it since we came back from Sierra Nevada skiing. Yes, when we were skiing, I was still doing every day something that I really love skiing. But from that moment, I think it was the end of March till now, I didn't do anything but create content, create videos because my passion to educate you is really big. I really want you to understand this. So also I hope really that you will understand that in the next three weeks, I will be offline a little bit more because I will do a three week holiday with my youngest daughter, Jessa. The oldest one will be gone for a couple of weeks on their own uh, trip. So I will be with, there with Romain, Jessa, and of course our lovely dog. And I want to spend a little bit more time with them and focus on that part of life as well in the coming three weeks because I know my YouTube visa are dropping down. It's summer, everyone is having holidays. So I'm gonna continue creating videos, but in a shorter form, so five to 10 minutes per day to still keep you a little bit educated every day, but it won't be those 25 minute videos for the next three weeks. So today was the last long video. Tomorrow, I will already start with some shorter videos to show you exactly what I mean, guys. So the life lessons for today, guys, is yes, learn as if you live forever, but live the life as if you can die tomorrow. Just spend your precious time, which is the most precious assets that you have. Spend the time to doing things that make you really happy. The things that you really love. Don't spend too much of that time to all those things that you don't really love or that you need to do because you need some money. Please minimize the amount of time that you're spending to that. Time is a too precious asset to be spending it to all those ridiculous things that you don't really love to do. Start to focus more on shifting the time, your most precious asset, into doing those things that you really love. And that is when you will see your life turning around into becoming more happy, happy, happy every time again. And yes, I'm not giving up because I saw that comment. Yeah, you're going to make shorter videos and then you're going to disappear. No, I'm not doing it. This is one of my passions. Educating is one of my biggest passions. Making this content is one of my biggest passions. But yes, I will take a short break of three weeks when I will be on a beautiful campsite, enjoying the time to the fullest and spending two of my most precious assets. One, the time and two, of course, also a little bit Bitcoin on that campsite and celebrating life with Jessa, Homan and Teddy to the fullest. While, of course, I also need to give some Bitcoins with Juna and Julie so that they can celebrate the life to the fullest as well there on their holiday destinations. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, share with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, leave a comment. Again, let me know which parts must I keep in those five to 10 minutes videos. Let me know down below. Thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing day. And if you are going to campsites, somewhere in Spain, you might run into me, but make sure you own this Bitcoin, Bitcoin original. When you own this Bitcoin, I will have a drink and some dinner with you guys if I see you wearing that on the campsite. Thanks for watching, I wish you an amazing day and see you tomorrow again. Bam.